turn down volume. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the channel. I'm Whitney Moon. This is Whitney Moon's Intuitive Magic, my channel. I use a lot of my intuition, okay? And today my intuition has been telling me um, it has it has really been a rough morning for me. Uh, I don't really know why. Um, just a lot of energy. That's kind of the only way that I can describe it is it seems like it's, it's a lot of energy. So as you can see, I have a cup of blood here. Okay. It's uh, blood water. Um, it is going to represent what we're doing with the reading today. Okay. Um, the dice that were played were, um, is Pisces with the 12th house and Pluto. Okay. So the way that I'm seeing this energy kind of play out, uh, plus we've got the red candle lit. Um, I feel like something is going to die. It's the conclusion of something. And that's why it's been such a hard morning. I don't know if you felt the energy or not this morning. It's been raining all morning, very intense, heavy energy. And it's kind of just made me stop and just chill out. And it's, it's, for me, it's not really doing anything. Um, but I think for other people, it could be driving them insane. Um, so we've started out with this. We didn't actually say how we were going to do the reading. So I'm guessing we're going to wax it. Let's wax it. Okay, blood on blood. Are we ready? Let's see what it says. Whoop. I was trying to hold on to that. There it is. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if this was going to, this was going to give me a reading in itself. And it really did. There's a dog. And then I heard like loyalty right away. And I also saw roses, love, loving loyalty. Um, and I feel like somebody has been breaking their back. Okay. Trying to get somewhere. And, um, this is connected to three people. Okay. This is connected to three people and there's definitely a spy. Okay. So that could be the Pluto energy. Um, the Pluto energy is bringing in, um, that death vibe. Okay. But with death, we know is transformation. And a lot of us right now, um, are in the point of transition where we're gaining our energy back from the ones who stole it. Okay. To begin with. And this is not uh, something that just happened recently. This is something that has kind of been happening and going on with the collective for quite a while. I mean, 40, 50, hundreds and thousands of years. Okay. Even before we were here. Okay. Um, think people, um, switched us and put us into roles where we had to break our backs, quote unquote, um, to give everybody else what they need. And it's not even really give everybody else what they need. It's more like give everybody what they want while you're stuck struggling, perhaps. Okay. So, um, what, whoever you've been loyal to or whatever this loyalty is about, the loyalty is what's going to help shape shift this energy for you, I guess, with the roses, because when we are presented with roses, when I think of roses, it's always love. And even when I look at them, I feel love, right? It's, they're so beautiful and they're so jam packed and it's so, a rose is so intricately put together so perfectly, right? That it's like when, when something is aligned in your life, it will line up perfectly almost, right? And if you've been put in a position where uh, you've been being abused because of something else, then Pluto is coming out with this Pisces energy to be like, um, your superhuman qualities that you bring to this life um, have been hiding in the dark. And they've been hiding in the dark so then other people could use them, right? It's like having a tool shed, 
Okay. But you don't really know that you have it because you know, the parents who left it for you, they left it in the dark and they didn't give you the key and they didn't really tell you, Hey, by the way, if you ever need tools along the way, uh, we've got a storage unit and you just go right on in there and you grab whatever you need and then you put it back. Right. Your parents were kind of like, eh, we're not really going to set you up for anything. And, you know, the universe is telling us we have to. So we're just going to leave out the immediate information in the middle. So then you can't get from point A to point B without breaking yourself in between, because that's where you're supposed to have the tool to help you. So there was supposed to be something given to you and it never was. Or, but it, it, and, and like your parents, I feel like are trying to, um, they're trying to get that technicality. Um, so then they don't get in trouble, you know, with the law, they're trying to say like, well, we left it for them and they should know, you know, if they went looking, they would have found it. So they're almost trying to like blame you for it to be like, you didn't look hard enough for it. You didn't try hard enough when there you are breaking your back. So the universe is kind of like definitely highlighting these people in the reading to be uh, full of shit. Okay. They're, they're full of shit. And, and, um, you've had to live out and play out something in order to show what these blood relatives were doing to you. Because I feel like this is all blood related. I feel like it's all intricately kind of connected within, which is maybe why I'm getting the rose, right? It's all in there. there there's something in there. And actually, if you take, um, all the petals off a rose, on the inside of a rose, there are these like beautiful little, um, yellow, um, spiky things. Oh, it's, it's hard to, you know, in the inside of a flower and I can't even think of the name of a flower I could use, but then they just got these, uh, beautiful little spring outs that come out in the middle of the flower. And then these little balls on the end of it usually, right? Um, kind of like, almost kind of like a Venus flytrap, right? It's got those little quills at the end so then it can, right? So in, in the middle of a rose, there's actually these yellow, these yellow little happy little beams in the middle with these little balls on the end. That's where all the pollen is right in the middle, right? Of the rose. And most people don't know that because they've never taken a rose apart or they've never let a rose wilt all the way down to show you its interior. So I feel like, um, I feel like your relatives, maybe, you know, like with this toolbox, hiding this toolbox from you as the analogy is kind of like saying, um, they've, they've, you've gotten to the bottom of it, right? Like you've pulled all the petals apart. You've done the work to show what's underneath while your family is still portraying everybody's life as the full rose. And that's not true. It's not, it, it's not what it looks like on the outside. And by trying to hide it with all these other petals, it's just, trying to cover up the lie even more, but you know, it's almost like trying to put makeup on a pimple. Like you, you can't do it. Like, I mean, you can do it and, and you can try to hide it as much as you want, but then you're just going to end up building a mountain on your face to try to cover it. Right. And that's not going to work there. It's going to be able to show that there's something on the skin. That's not right. Right. So no matter how much they've tried to hide this, um, by hurting you, right? That by hurting you and then trying to get themselves out of it has actually postponed you for quite a while. Okay. All because of blood, right? It's all because of blood. It's all what blood relatives are doing to you. Oh, there's a seahorse. I almost see this as intestines. Like I feel like, um, if you've had intestinal problems, right. Um, there's something in this for you. Definitely. Yeah. Always make you doing, always making you do the lifting of everything treating you like a man, if you were a woman, you know, and then if you, if you were born a man, then almost kind of, um, making you try to be 
a, a braver man, a stronger man, right? Never accepting that you were just human. These people, 10 minutes on the clock exactly, like these, these people, these individuals that you're dealing with, um, I see a lot of like two-faced behavior, a lot of two-faced behavior. And that's really sad coming from parents, right? That your parents can be as two-faced as they are. A twist of events. Look at that. Bada boom, bada bing. A twist of events is coming, which is what I think this 12th house is a part of. And really, it's this connection that you've been working really hard to disconnect from, okay? But it's hard when it's your DNA, right? It's not, you, you can't just erase your DNA and act like it never existed. It's, it's how you make you, okay? So there's been a lot of things um, lurking under the surface, okay, that were really trying to harm you. But luckily, the universe um, didn't allow or is exposing these people and not allowing them to lie on your behalf anymore or something like that. Because the evidence has been building up. Okay. But it's been building up, um, like secretly. Okay. It, it's, it's, a, this is a very secret uh, operation, I feel like, okay. It's not like, uh, calling crime stoppers and having it all written down. This is very, this is very detailed, like intricate work that has been going on. Okay. And there's the twist of events coming is that this connection is going to be broken from you and you are going to actually, what you've been working on to get money, however way you've been working to get money. Okay. Um, help is near. Which means I feel like if, if this if this whole thing has to do with money on how they hurt you, okay, it was over money. Um, I mean, it doesn't. It never matters what the verdict is, okay, about why somebody chooses to do something. But whatever their motive was, is what comes back around. So if the motive was to destroy you and take your money and make you work harder for it, right? Because there's that saying, work hard and work smart, right? You have to learn how to work smart in a lot of situations because the working hard is what's going to hurt you, right? So I feel like these people, um, you know, like these ones around you, they, uh, they poisoned you into believing that things had to be done in a way where you got hurt, that's really what I'm getting. And I'm also getting a camel. Um, there's a camel here now. And I'm feeling like that um, probably was, is kind of depicting um, your, ra your rational. Okay. So what they, what these people did was they rationalized what was around you. So you know how a camel will store all this water, right? When they get to a watering hole, they, they, they take it and they store it in their humps, right? Because they live in the desert and you don't always get water in the desert. So if a camel can fill up its humps, then it has enough water, right? And it can sustain itself for much longer. So I feel like, um, you know, you had these satchels and they were supposed to be filled up with money. So then you had it. It wasn't so you could spend it. It was so then you had reserves so you didn't die. And they depleted you of that water, right? You had so many set up resources, like a store, like, like I said, this toolbox, this tool shed. Okay. You had so many things that were, were and should have been put aside for you. And you didn't get to have help in anything. It was like all the tools just went to waste. All the power went to waste. And then you had to overexert yourself to compensate. Okay. So that's what these thieves did. And they're, they're trying to say at this point, they gave you mercy, but they didn't. If, if, if there truly was mercy on the deck, then they would have told you at least 
that you had access to a shed. You just had to find it, but they didn't even tell you about it. They didn't even, they didn't even give you a chance. That's the thing. They didn't give you a chance. They're using these technicalities. Like, well, if your friends had tool chests, then obviously, you know, that your parents had one. And, and if the people around you did this, then obviously you knew that we left that for you too. And it's like, yeah, but you didn't tell me how am I supposed to know? I mean, a lack of information is a lack of information. It doesn't make the person stupid. It means they don't have what they need to answer the equation. And if you've been running around trying to find these answers, trying to break your back to do things, then really you did look for it. You did look for help. You did seek refuge. So it, it's it's even worse. And, you know, I watched this judge today and this kid, um, this um, uncle took his nephew to court about something. It didn't say what it was about, but the uncle was like, how dare you? I told you I'm the king of the castle up in my house. You can't, you know, I don't care about you, nephew. It is my house. And the nephew was like, I know, sir. I know. I realize now that I fucked up. And what the initial story was, was that the nephew was in a gang. He left the gang. He has no parents. All he had was his uncle. So he went to his uncle. He sought refuge. Okay. He, he did. Oh my God. This poor kid did everything that he could to get himself away from this gang. So then he had a chance at survival and his fucking uncle is there in court patronizing him and alienating him and telling him that he is nothing to him because he's a kid and kids don't mean anything. And this judge was like, you better check yourself right now. This is not a kid. This man left a gang. He sought refuge with you who's supposed to be a man. And here you are nailing him to the cross for everything he did wrong when he came to you for help and you were supposed to help him. And instead you made him feel less of a man than what this gang did. Meaning what his uncle was portraying to him was worse than that, that, what that gang was trying to help him do, right? It's, it's like, it's, it's so funny that your parents or your guardians or the ones who claim to love you, right? Put you up on that cross faster than your fucking street homies, faster than the ones that you work with, faster than the ones that, you know, your bullies that actually really are your fans, right? It, it's, it's just, it's really twisted. And I really hope that people out there, um, learn to see in between because it, anybody can show you something. Anybody can lie to you. Anybody can say that their life is a certain way. You have to be your own investigator. You have to see things and, and for the way that they truly are and that people lie and that, you know, they're covering up their situations and they're covering up their bullshit. And they don't really like their lives and they don't really like their husbands or their wives or their kids. And like, it doesn't, I don't care what social media says. I, I watched this fucking video where this woman was recording her husband because her husband looked like this doting husband on social media puts up all these pictures of his kids and all these pictures of his wife and his wife secretly recorded him talking about how he wanted to kill his children how he actually hated them how much he hated his own wife he hates his life he doesn't want to be any part of it and it's like you know, like you, you see one thing and it goes both ways, right? You see a woman who's, who's putting up Facebook pictures all the time, how much she loves her kids. And, you know, she's showing them a good time. And then when the camera is off, she's hitting them. She's yelling at them. She's telling them that they're little fucking brats. And then she turns the camera on again. She tells everybody to smile, everybody laugh, right? Those people are the monsters. Those people are the ones that need to be exposed and fuck fucking Facebook and social media and bullshit. It's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's all a cult. It's all a part, um, to make you want things that are not there. Right. You know, and you know how I kind of thought about that. You know that you remember that pussy, pussy cat girls song that was like, don't you wish your girlfriend was like hot like me and a freak like me. And I was like that, like, that is so dangerous. Like, do you know how many guys listened to that song and then went home and expected their girlfriend to fucking put some show on for them while they're acting like an asshole and watching fucking pussycat girl doll fucking videos. Like you're just cheating on your girlfriend right there. And then you expect her to act a certain way when you get home because uh, a fucking video says you should, or some fucking bitch who's getting paid a million dollars to sing a song that isn't hers is, 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 it's false advertisement. It's, it's, it's portraying a false life. Okay. 
And I think that this was what this whole reading was about with this um, the kind of bleeding on the slate was like, these people are going to get exposed. You can't just keep putting up family pictures and then beating your kid after. People are going to catch on, right? They're going to be like, this something's not right here. And, and you think that nobody cares. You know, you think that no one's paying attention to you. Nobody gives a shit about you. But uh, I would I would check yourself on that because people are talking about you, I, I bet, a lot more than you think. And these people that you're dealing with, these family members that you're dealing with, people are talking about them more than they think and more than they realize, right? And the more that you expose them, the more that you put up secret videos or that you record them and you, you tell people, listen, you want to keep keep saying that my dad's a great person. Listen to this fucking voicemail and tell me that this is a good dad. Okay. Like if people, I, I, honestly, people deserve this. They want to run their mouths about shit that they don't know anything about, or if they want to have somebody's back and they don't understand what that person's done. Okay. For instance, like my sister's ex-husband, okay. Is now married with two kids. Well, I don't think he's married, but he's got two kids. Okay. With some new fucking woman. And the thing is, is that she doesn't know anything about him. If she truly knew who he was, not only as a human, but as an ex-husband, what he did to my sister. Okay. And not even the fact that he fucking ran over her dog, fucking sold her house from underneath her, bankrupted her, fucking put her on the streets. Okay. Tried to sell her fucking off to his friends, honestly. And then I'm pretty sure he tried to fucking put a death um, I think he tried to pay these people to kill her and it didn't work. Um, and we ran to Calgary and then he couldn't find us. And now that we're back in our hometown, um, I've exposed him to so many police investigations and I've exposed him on YouTube to protect myself. I talk about my sister's ex-husband because he is so into, um, side hustling that has to do with really, really bad people. I expose him. So then if anything ever happens to me and my sister, the cops know who to go to. Like I've, I've literally wrote out letters to be like, if something happens in a way where it looks like this, you need to investigate this person. If this happens to my sister and I, if something on our car gets fucked with, if something on our work gets messed with this person, you need to address. And I make sure the cops know where he lives. I make sure that I tell them what kind of businesses he's running. I make sure that I, I tell the cops about everything. And I think, I always think to myself, if she had a known, she never would have had kids with him ever. Right. And then even in a dream recently, he, um, my sister's ex-husband actually used his kids and was like, well, you wouldn't hurt my kids, would you? And I went, okay, I'm not going to give you that answer, but I told him what I would do to him and his family for what he did to me and my sister. And if you think that kids are going to stop me, no. No. And this was all a dream. Like, I don't even have to say that this was me conscious. It's not me conscious. This was me in the dream with him, knowing how many things that he's done to my sister and I just in general, let alone what he's done to other people. I don't care what he's done to other people. What he's done to my sister and I has massively uh, fucked us over. And if you want to fuck with my house, trust me, I'm going to come knocking. And it's not going to be when you expect it. And it's not going to be how you think it's going to like, I have appointments that I have to go to each week and I drive right by his house and he's got it advertised and he's got it nailed up. This is me and I don't have anything to hide, but yet he hides his own face on Facebook. He's hide his, he's tried to hide his family on Facebook, but their pictures are all right there. So people do try to hide, you know, right in front of you. And you're like, are, are you kidding? Maybe this is what this Pisces shit is about. You know, like maybe there are people around you that are hiding and you're like, motherfucker, come out. Like uh, if you think that I don't know that you're there, you're dumb. Cause I can smell you. I can hear you. And I can see you just cause it's a silhouette. Doesn't mean I don't know what your silhouette looks like. Right. And I saw this guy walking down the street the other day. I fucking knew it was him because when I turned around and saw him on the face to face, it was him. So you can easily see a person from behind and know who it is. I'm, I'm sick of people being like, I didn't know who it was. I didn't know. Who it was. Yes, you did. Yes, you do. You know who this shit is. You know who I'm talking about. It's just whether or not you want to rip the bandaid off to be like, Hey, you know, maybe mom is an asshole. Hey, maybe something really did happen here. Maybe they really did try to fuck me over because ever since I was like 17, 18 years old and I've asked my parents for help, suddenly they don't want to help me anymore. And yeah, we had a great childhood growing up and I got a lot 
lot of good memories. Suddenly, you know, once I was an adult, all those memories faded and my dad didn't want to come over anymore and help me. And he didn't want to help me do my oil changes. And he didn't want to help me because I wasn't a kid to him anymore. So I'm no use to him anymore, which means if your parents say that because you're an adult, you're no use to them anymore. You're not a kid anymore. They don't have to help you. Okay. 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 I mean, anybody can say what they want and believe what they want, but I mean, there's a huge part of me that's saying, uh, they just are not just going to be able to get away with that because anybody knows, uh, if you're a parent, you're a parent until that child dies or until you die. Okay. It's not some marriage contract. Okay. It's not like you can just divorce them. You're in a contract for life. You're on that birth certificate. They are yours. Right. So they have to make things right with that. Just like you would have to make things right with your kids if you fucked up. Right. It's all about, it's not about, Oh, they're picking on me. It's about no one's picking on anybody. It's, it's just, if somebody exposes something that you do, then you're doing something wrong and you need to accept that they exposed you for it. If you go and you expose somebody for doing something, they don't want to accept it. It doesn't matter. It's still been exposed right? Exposure is exposure and people can believe it or don't because even, even things that are happening right in front of their face, they still won't believe. They think it's a gag. They think their, their eyes are playing tricks on them. And it's like, you're, but you're seeing it right there with your eye. Like, how can you say that something's playing a trick on you? It's right there in front of your fucking face. Nobody's playing a trick on you. It's right there. Right. And I think that that's what maybe what these people have been trying to do. You know, they've been trying to say that they're not doing something, but they're doing it in front of everybody right to you. It's like, how can you say that? How can you say you're not doing something when people are watching you do it? Right? So this person is, whew. I mean, damn right. I hope they get a twist of events because huh, from the looks of it, they deserve it. Seven of Wands. I definitely feel that with Justice. Um, definitely being a little um, standoffish, a little defensive. Um, and that's the Justice part of this, okay? Seven of Wands also on this is the... Um, Gemini with Venus and then justice is Venus with Aquarius. Yeah. Like, like I think honestly, I think somebody had a really great time comparing you to a lot of people. Okay. And being like, well, they're not perfect. And I wish that they were better. And I wish that they were like this. And I wish that they were like that. And page of wands with the three of swords that really hurts you because I mean, they keep saying all these things that they wish you were, but yet you're like, um, but I'm right here. Why can't you just wish for me to be me? Why do you want me to be all these other things? I want to just be me. I am me. Okay. And this hurt somebody. Okay. This hurts somebody's heart. And now it's like, they want to come out of that a better person. And they almost want that to drive them forward. Like you messed up. You did things to me. You lied. Okay. You put, you took justice and justice was supposed to be blind and you use it against me. You judge me all the time. Right. Even though it was them who was completely toxic. It, it's not you. Okay. It's them. And then Pluto with the wheel of fortune. Oh, bless you. With the four of swords and the king of cups.
Yeah, I think kind of getting out of this like trapped situation and moving into like direct energy, Mercury and Taurus, like just I am in my place. I am grounded. I am there and I will become better than what you set me up to be. Like that kid who left the gang. Oh, you should have saw him. He had his little glasses on. He was reading from his piece of paper about how so sorry he was to his uncle for messing around. I mean, he just came from a gang, okay? The kid's not perfect. This, like, 18-year-old kid, and he was trying so hard, and his uncle was just railing on him. And then once that judge said something, and once that judge checked that uncle... That kid kind of went like, nice, you know, like, like the judge actually physically started crying uh, because he could see himself in that kid so much. And, and then looking at that uncle and, you know, it was really nice because a lot of times men will just kind of side with men and he didn't. He did not side with that man. He, he was more pissed off at that man than what that kid had even done. He, he didn't even bring up what the kid did. And I'm saying kid because he's a teenager. They didn't even bring up what that guy did. It was all about completely taking that uncle and demasculating him with a court full of people. And that's exactly what he did. He took him down from that pedestal and he made that kid feel a lot better because man, did that kid ever try to just refocus? It's not easy, you know, like to, to just switch lives and go from one extreme to another, right? It comes with a lot of painful memories and, and it comes with a lot of, um, you know, pain and, 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 uh, stress and post-traumatic stress and, and post-traumatic details and, and, um, just, Oh man, complex trauma. Right. And, and what you've had to suffer, right. Because of this bloodshed, because of what these people did and how they felt about you. Right. They really, I I'm getting, that's not love. And, and that's what the judge said to the uncle. He goes, here, you are trying to portray that you love your, your, you love your nephew, that you're trying to, um, do what's best for him by giving him all these rules and lecturing him and telling him he's nothing. He's like, I don't see any love coming from you at all. He goes, tough love with no love isn't tough love. That's just toughness. And it's true because this uncle was trying to say he was giving his nephew tough love. That's not tough love. Making somebody bend over backwards, making somebody jump through hoops. That's not tough love. That's abuse. That's abuse of authority, abuse of power, abuse over a vulnerable, right? And, and maybe your parents didn't see it that way, or maybe your grandparents didn't see it that way because they were fucking born into a war themselves with a bunch of crooked fucking parents that didn't know what they were doing either, right? Because something, something in my dreams last night was telling me that I beat my dog when I was a kid. And I had this little poodle who used to sleep with me every night because I was molested and she just knew it. So she slept with me every single night. I didn't have to ask her. She was just there. 18 years she slept beside me and um, sometimes I hit her as a kid when she would be barking and she'd be being a bad girl and I went you know what honestly I forgave myself for that and I know my dog forgave me because if I if I wasn't shown violence as a kid I wouldn't have been violent towards her so why did I hit her because my mother hit her because my stepfather hit her because other people hit her so when she did something bad I did I didn't know what I was doing because once I got older and I loved her more and more and more, I didn't hit her. And I only really like kind of smacked her nose because she really barked a lot and she wouldn't stop sometimes. She would just continue. She'd be looking me right dead in the eye, barking. And she knew she was being a little asshole and I'd give her a little smack on the nose. But I mean, only a couple times do I ever remember hitting her as a kid and her actually yelping. And then she would always come back and she would apologize for doing what she did because she was doing something she wasn't supposed to. And I'm not get, telling you that I should have hit her, but why did I? I mean, I, I mean, why, how does a kid do something if they're not shown it? So I was shown something and I repeated it right to, to take that out on somebody and to put them behind bars because they copied something that they saw is not fair. 
Okay, you can't do that to a bunch of vulnerable people who really don't know what's right and wrong. I mean, kids almost are like sociopaths. They don't they don't know right and wrong. And it, everything is about them up until they learn rules and they learn how to work with other people. But babies and toddlers are sociopaths. You see them. You see them running around. They don't fucking know anything. Right. And and to try to say that uh, that a. Uh, a, a, a full-blown adult is a sociopath and they won't register with what's right and what's wrong, then they deserve to get fucking put into a facility where they can get help. Right. And a lot of times my stepmother, uh, she comes to me in dreams and she tells me that she had no control over herself. And what she did to my sister and I was because of my sister and I and how we acted. And I, I tell her over and over and over again, that you deserve to be in a psych ward. If you're telling me that two girls, two little girls, a four-year-old and a six-year-old had control over a 30 year old and she still won't take responsibility for that. Uh, she, 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 that's, 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 um, that is the characteristics of somebody who needs help. She needs medication. She needs therapy. She needs to speak. She needs to, somebody needs to figure out why she feels like she can hurt little kids to make herself feel better. Was she hurt as a child and it made her parents feel better? Does, did it, did it, why did it make her feel good to hurt my sister and I? And still to this day, as a 38 and a, and a 40 year old woman, she still hurts us. Does it still make her feel good? And why, why does it make her feel good? Right? What is she benefiting out of it? Does her make it does it make her pussy feel good? Right? Does it give her sexual gratification? Does it make her head feel good? Does it make her heart feel good? Like what does it make her feel? Because when you hurt somebody, you gotta be feeling something, something, some type of gratifying feeling is coming out of somebody who hurts somebody. So what's that gratification? What's that sin? That's what I wanna know. And whether we'll ever find that out, right? It's different with everybody because um, people hurt you and, and did things to you for a number of their own reasons. They can't say that their reason can be found in somebody else's reasoning. Their reasons are their reasons. They can't blame it on something else. That's called a coward. And we all know there are plenty of those around. Okay, but cowards are those. They're, they're cowards. Whatever. You turn around, you fucking walk away. You turn around, you walk away. Hey, hey, ho, hey. And that's it. This was a really intense reading. And I hope that uh, it resonates with who it needs to resonate with. Okay. And uh, if it doesn't resonate with you, honestly, don't worry. Um, not all messages will resonate with the person who watched them. Okay. But do uh, keep your eye out for the next reading or find another reader. doesn't matter to me. Uh, thank you so much for your comments, likes, and subscribes. Thank you uh, for your emails, your donations, your generous donations to the channel. I really appreciate that. Uh, I really appreciate everything that the collective does uh, to bring this channel forward. It has taken a very long time to get us to where we are, but we are still growing. And they can't stop us, and we've proved that they can't stop us. These cards are so stiff, I can't even shuffle them. So... Uh, thank you for everything. Okay. And uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It really does help. Okay. Surprisingly, um, it really does. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Namaste and goodbye.